Hey guys, Bowie here and this is episode 1 of 5 things high MMR players do that you should start doing as well. One big struggle players have in the mid game is dealing with TP scrolls. As a core player, you want all your farm to count, but sometimes being able to immediately TP to a tower or shrine can be the difference maker in plus 25 MMR or not. There's a way, albeit slightly costly, to keep your TPs in the backpack while at the same time being able to use them afterwards. When you leave your TP in the backpack, the cooldown will be longer. If you go to the side shop while you have a TP in your backpack and you buy another one, you can see that the cooldown uh, will be the same. That being said though, if you drop say TP and buy another one, when you pick your old stack of TPs, they will have the updated cooldown. This can save your team when you feel like you need to walk back to base, when in reality, going for a side shop could be a faster way out or into a fight. By the way, I learned this with PSJ, so I feel he deserves the credit for this tip. Have you ever walked as a support at night time in a completely hidden location and then a random range creep aggro to you? When that happens, you were either not that hidden because the creeps revealed you as they were strolling there, or maybe uh, there was vision revealing you. Maybe a ward, maybe an invisible hero. This is a great way to review observer wards or even to get the hell out of there if there is invisible enemies in the enemy team missing. In this clip, I demonstrate how the support storm spirit can discover whether that part of the radiant lane is warded or not. Enemy creeps shouldn't be able to aggro there without vision and as a support this is a great way to either get killed by the enemy treant plus offlaner or the ward award if you're playing something like a monkey king Riki, or spirit most of the time you can go for a play like this since you have some safety or mobility uh but anyways be aware of that random range creep attacking you Sometimes when you're playing the mid lane against heroes that can easily trigger your raindrops like Zeus or that can trigger multiple charges with one skill like Queen of Pain, you can actually backpack your raindrops when you're in lane and just take them out later uh, and stay in the lane or just equip them when you're jungling. This is especially important when you're playing a mid hero that can jungle pretty fast like Shadowfiend or Lina. That extra mana region really helps you. Another great use of backpacking raindrops is when you as a support intend to build an urn but your charges are ending. By backpacking the last charge, you're saving gold for a bunch of wards or or even your future arcane boots without needing to buy another one later. Direct pathing is something a lot of people heard about but very rarely anyone uses it. There's a bunch of different uses for it, the most common use is on heroes with low range abilities. As most of us know, Dota has a pathfinder. Whenever you want to move somewhere, you don't need to dodge obstacles. The AI will move you towards your chosen path, but sometimes they can backfire or make easy or fast plays be super hard to pull off. Pay attention to this pudge that could be running away. By clicking on the frostbite hotkey, this is what CM attempts to do. But instead, if I use my direct pathing hotkey to move to a closer place to pudge that I know will have enough range, I can pull off frostbite way faster. Some heroes like Shadowfin are able to get raises way easier by using this hotkey as well. That being said though, remember that as long as you hold the hotkey, you will move in that direction and some weird obstacles can cost you time. The last tip for today is about lane harass and going for kills in a safe lane. Sometimes in lower memoirs, we will see supports hiding in the trees to kill the offlaner as soon as the creep waves meet. That's a great plan, but something a lot of supports don't realize when doing that is that most of the time what that accomplishes is all the enemy creeps aggroing on them and their carry as they try to go for the kill, which means that the next wave will push super hard towards the offlaner. That offlaner will just TP and get pretty much level 3 out of that. Most of the times, the first blood gold is not worth that kill because the offlaner probably didn't even use regen since you just dove him as soon as he was there, and now he has level advantage over all of you and regen, so that regen is actually way more valuable. A good trick to go for the same play, or even just harass, is making sure that your range creep is killed before attempting it. In this clip, for instance, we see Windranger being pretty annoying against Miracle while Ogre is hiding. He only goes for the harass when he's sure that those melee creeps aggroed on the range creep from Dire, meaning that Miracle can get the deny and maintain creep balance. In this Arteezy replay, Legion starts off with a very aggressive overwhelming odds. And pay attention to Arteezy, he can see that his range creep is pretty damaged uh, and that his supports are there. So he mans up and the first thing he does is deny the range creep after the engagement. And while, while all of that was happening, the enemy range creep is still alive. This means that when the next wave is coming, they don't care if they are drawing aggro like this, because the lane will push eventually anyways, while Legion is still level 1. Well guys, this is it for today, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, Pugna is a platform that's supporting this channel ever since I started pretty much, those guys are great, you can find the extended version of some of my videos in their platform. You should also look out for Oracle, this is a free tool that analyzes your plays and is gonna be able to give you a 360 of how good you are as a player compared to your own MMR and MMRs above you. This will help you focus on what you really need to improve to be a better player. 